Hi folks, this is Richard Doyle here with Be Lean for Life Coach and uh, I just wanted to say thank you once again for tuning in. This is video four in my series of 10 free videos. This one is about the immune system and inflammation, so please enjoy. Okay then, let's get into the immune system and inflammation. Now, the immune system and inflammation are very closely related. So let's give you uh, an example here of how this all works. So let's look at the role of the immune system in terms of protecting us. So let's assume you get a bee sting or something like that. And uh, these obviously are toxins that are entering the body. And so the immune system recognizes this and goes off to um, fix the problem. It rushes to the site, causes a little bit of uh, local inflammation, uh, disables the threat, and then life goes on. So that's how the immune system works in your favor. That kind of inflammation is good. It's called acute inflammation. Now where we have a problem is with the systemic inflammation, which is typically long term. Uh, people that suffer from a leaky gut or something like that have um, typically have systemic inflammation and as a result of the systemic inflammation the um, immune system is working uh, basically 24 7 to try and fix the problem so it has some really bad um, outcomes when you have systemic inflammation rather than acute inflammation so let's go back in history to when we were uh, hunters and gatherers so back then we would hunt and gather all the food that we wanted to eat. Every now and again there would be a predator on the horizon, let's say a tiger or something like that that was uh, looking out to eat you. So what does the body do? Well, it goes into fight or flight mode and the um, hormones start cursing through the body, the adrenaline and the cortisol and things like that. The effect that it has is that it dilates your blood vessels, allowing uh, blood to flow more freely to the extremities so that you can uh, get away quickly as necessary. And it also um, helps you focus. It shuts down various parts of the system like the um, digestive system, reproduction system, etc. because it doesn't want any of that going on while it's trying to get away from the tiger. So if you're suffering from systemic inflammation, you basically have that stress going on all the time. So that is akin to basically being chased by a tiger 24-7. And so as you might expect, that's not going to have a very good effect on you. So let's talk about stress. Uh, and we think typically of stress as being external, meaning that... Uh, you know, we have anxiety or depression or, you know, something that uh, is external to our body. And as a result, we react to that. And that reaction is referred to as stress. So that's what we call uh, external stress. But the internal stress that's caused by inflammation is, is much worse. And it's much worse, of course, because it's there continuously. Now, of course, with the external um, stress we're kind of motivated to fix that obviously we don't like the effect of it and so we can go out there and find some uh, solutions we may get some medication we may get some therapy um, either way uh, there's ways we can fix that i wouldn't necessarily recommend those ways there are other ways but that's typically what we do when we have external stress now let's say we show up at the doctor's office with uh, stress-related issues and that those stresses are associated with the internal stress. And um, can you imagine the doctor looking at you and saying, hmm, I think you probably have got uh, systemic inflammation and uh, that's what's causing a lot of the stress in your body and therefore we should probably look at your diet and see if we can change things so that we can get that stress reduced. Well. That typically doesn't happen. Why doesn't that happen? Well, it happens for a couple of reasons, really. I think one reason is that uh, typically doctors that uh, go through 10 or 12 years of um, medical education perhaps only do one semester of nutrition. At least, of course, they're um, specializing in nutrition. But a lot of my doctor friends have told me that they had next to no nutritional um, uh, education at all. And so as the doctors are very busy, um, they don't get a lot of face-to-face -face time with their um, patients. 
and so they're looking to fix the symptoms rather than the cause so you know they will recommend medication of some kind and send you on your way rather than trying to fix the cause which uh, would be a lot cheaper and a lot better for your body so perhaps even worse than that is uh, let's say that uh, as a result of this uh, inflammation you end up with some kind of metabolic disease which puts you in hospital so now you're in hospital and uh, it's time to eat well what are they going to feed you well they're going to feed you on the institutionalized standard american diet and what's actually happening there is that the reasons you ended up in hospital um, was because of your diet and what do they do they feed you the same stuff that puts you there so that's not a whole lot of good either so now let's look at the situation when um, you've got this um, systemic inflammation going on so it's 24 7 all the poor old immune, immune soldiers are, are worn out and um, they don't really have time to go and deal with these acute issues like the bee sting well let's take the bee sting for example so you get the sting and in the first example it was taken care of pretty immediately by the immune system but let's assume that the immune system is now degraded or downgraded by the um, inflammation that's going on in your system so now um, your immune system the soldiers that are fighting for you are all heavily engaged in battles around other areas of the body and uh, are not really available and are not really available to get to the site of the new injury or threat whatever it may be and so that bee sting that might have been taken care of in a couple of days with a little bit of minor inflammation uh, could go on for a long time and could even uh, get infested so that's kind of what happens when your immune system is downgraded uh, let's take another example let's say you um, go and have a flu shot well, uh, the way the flu shot works is that you have a little bit of this virus uh, is injected into you and as a result the body sees it as a toxin and goes to work to neutralize it. It's a very small amount so it's not a big issue but the immune system actually figures out what it is and remembers how it dealt with it. So if your immune system is downgraded then the likelihood is you could even catch flu from the flu shot even more so um, the um, body wasn't uh, sufficiently prepped or at least the immune system wasn't sufficiently prepped to deal with the threat so when the real flu starts uh, coming around it's quite possible that the immune system won't have been set up and primed to deal with it and then you catch flu so you've probably heard people say I can't believe I, I got flu but um, you know I had the flu shot well that's how that happens a similar thing uh, can be associated with allergies there is uh, an immune system reaction within the body to um, allergies and if that immune system is downgraded then those allergies basically are not going to be ad addressed as quickly as they should be now the immune system also works as a maintenance crew so um, an example of the things that it does it starts to uh, remove plaque from the arteries of course plaque in the arteries can cause the things like stroke and heart attack and it's obviously in your interest that there's enough immune soldiers uh, running around that can do this clean up maintenance work well if your system is downgraded again there's going to be less of these guys available to help you out and so the plaque and so on that can uh, potentially build up in your um, blood vessels if you're eating the wrong stuff uh, will continue to grow because you don't have an immune system to combat it another issue is uh, you can't really blame your parents either um, I'm sure you've heard people say that uh, their family is predisposed to certain diseases like being overweight obesity heart attack and so on and it's true that you do actually inherit the um, genes from your parents but the genes um, basically are affected by your lifestyle as much as anything and that lifestyle we're talking about here particularly is, is your diet so these genes are turned on or turned off by the uh, lifestyle that you lead this comes under the scientific heading of epigenetics and those switches that uh, are either turned on to either upgrade or downgrade the uh, genes affects the amounts of proteins and hormones that they produce and therefore affect the way your body works so if you are born into a family with a certain predisposition to a disease 
and you grow up in that family and all your lifestyle choices while you're growing up are similar to your parents and if you continue with the same lifestyle choices that your parents made and you made when you were growing up it's likely that those um, predispositions to certain diseases will manifest themselves in you as an adult later in life it's just kind of the way things goes Another situation we can look at here is the um, toxins that get into the bloodstream as a result of a leaky gut or something like that are basically undigested proteins and they have a really good um, mechanism whereby they try to mimic um, some of the body's um, real proteins and they mimic certain proteins within the body and attach to them and so now the um, immune system recognizes there's something going wrong here but it gets terribly confused and so it attacks this combined uh, protein some of which of course is good protein that was you know necessary to keep you healthy and strong and when this happens you effectively start attacking yourself and that leads to all the autoimmune diseases so that's not good either <laughs> So like in uh, most of my videos, I usually have some good news at the end. And the good news here is that a lot of these conditions can be reversed. So like in the first three videos, we talked about insulin resistance. We talked about leaky gut. We talked about the body's weight set point. All of these things can be reversed. In the same way, inflammation can be reversed and the Im immune system can be re-strengthened back to where it should be. And you can actually reverse all these situations, these metabolic diseases and so on. And so you will end up with a better quality of life and live a lot longer. So it's really important the, uh, what you actually eat. And the standard American diet is clear clearly causing an awful lot of problems and we need to do better than that and I will help you understand how we do that in future videos.